you've had this celebrity life where you could just relax and just sit back. Get fat. Get fat. Raise my blood pressure, right. watching the news, Pointing not doing the anything to solve problems. Right. But you're That's, sticking your neck out, man. I mean, it's got to be tough. Well, and with hanging out with Zach, it's not just sticking my neck out. We're putting, <laughs> up, I'm putting my nose in the blender, <laughs> and <laughs> and it's it's been a blast. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. We're pushing back to darkness, making inroads for the kingdom of light. And uh, my wife still loves me. The sun still comes up in the <laughs> morning. Good. Let's go. That's good. That's, that's good. Right. So do you live predominantly out in L.A.? Because that's got to add a, a, a level of difficulty that, that you don't, <laughs> you know, you could, you're taking slings and arrows as it is, but you're doing it out in L.A. too? Well, listen, what happens in California eventually spreads to the whole country, right? Uh -huh. What we see in New yeah, York and true. California, it's like eventually it's, it's going to hit Iowa and Kansas. It's even coming to, to Texas. Oh, it's mm -hmm. here. Right? Yeah. So I'm trying to hold the line out in California so y'all don't have to deal with it. <laughs> well, we appreciate that a lot. Now, where were you born, man? Like, where, where were you born and raised? I was born in Los Angeles. Okay, so you were born. Yeah, okay. yeah. Uh, my wife was born in New York, uh -huh. Buffalo, New York. So... Uh, I've always lived out there, and you know, pound for pound, I think California has more to offer than any other state in the union. Think mm. about it. You want? We got mountains. We got beaches. You can snow ski and surf in the same day. We have no humidity. Gorgeous oh, don't weather. Make, don't no make me bugs. Like it. Don't the make best me like restaurants. It. The best stores. <laughs> yeah. You have agriculture. We have oil. We have more Bible believing, God fearing, constitutional mm. loving Christians than probably any other state. We got forty million people out there. Okay. There's so much good out in California, but then you got San Francisco and Los Angeles, <laughs> right? And and then you've got Gavin Newsom, and you've got <laughs> you've got yeah. some some forces that really condense power in powerful places yeah. that really kind of make it awful with seven dollars a gallon for gas. I lived in California for about a year, and the one thing I did not like was the traffic, LA yeah. traffic. Yeah, even though you yeah. had like eight lanes on each side. That's right. That's Ooh, right. That was yeah, a lot. we need we need Elon that Musk tunnel. to like build that tunnel. How's that process? Like, I, are we done with the tunnel? Because I, you've been talking yeah. about tunnel for like six years now. Yeah. Or so, jetpacks. Jetpacks would or be some, fun. I don't know. Jetpacks yeah. would be cool. But I have lo learned to love so much about California. Um, you know, taking sunset walks on the beach, man, is just, <laughs> you know, there, there's you a lot of beauty there. Zach, I'm going to have you put this under Kirk's right hand. Oh, absolutely. So that, okay. uh, when he hits the thing, it doesn't echo so much. Yeah. There you go. There you Th go. All right. Thank cool. you. But I, I, I enjoy Tennessee. I enjoy Texas. Yeah. I've got friends all over. We have six children. Um, two are in Colorado. Two are in Tennessee. One's in Massachusetts and one's in Wyoming. So we're kind of everywhere. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So... So, Zach, are, you're based out of Houston, right? Yep, based so, out of Houston. So how much traveling are you doing with Kirk? These, is it just Texas stuff, or are you going everywhere with him? So, you know, Kirk does a lot of speaking engagements. He does that on his own. He doesn't need me to go with him. But for uh, anything that would be related to the Brave Book Story Hour Tour, now yeah. we're taking on Scholastic, so we're traveling to, to public schools here uh, in a few weeks, and uh, we're doing a trip up to New York to do some media and I get to go on uh, on those trips with them, all the fun stuff. That's so. awesome. That's awesome. Now, I know you guys are um, going to leave here in just a few minutes. Go grab some breakfast before your other engagements. And I got to ask you, Kirk, because it's just going to be a couple guys going out, getting breakfast. And do you have encounters out in public? And when you have those encounters, are they generally positive? Or, or do you get some uh, radical folks coming up to you, giving you crap? Uh. A, a little of both, mm -hmm. mostly the first, mostly positive, mostly good. Um, you know, um, I, I have been known to spontaneously break into the Growing Pains theme song right there in the middle of, of Starbucks yes. if if yes. if I meet a super fan yeah. of Mike Seaver. <laughs> love it. Um, so I love, I, I really do love meeting people. Yeah. And uh, what a, what a, what, I, I, I did nothing to deserve a chance to have a job where 
I, I was part of people's favorite memories growing up as a kid. Absolutely. Yeah. M- met, met some great people here who, who work at the Blaze who said that they, they grew up and, you know, when they were when they were 12 years old, uh, in their in their heart, they were married to Mike Seaver. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you for saying that because you know, this person told me, hey, you know I was married to that guy out there, right? Yeah, when, like, they, when, they were, when they were 11. About? And I was so, like, does he know that? <laughs> and, I, and I think, man, that's just so... That, that, what a blessing that is. Yeah. And so I'm really thankful when I'm out somewhere and people say, hey, that, that, that show was something that really was part of my childhood. So let me ask you this. Uh, do you, first of all, are you a big sports fan? Do you care about sports at all? Follow it? I, I care about it when when my kids are caring about it and when my my wife's a Buffalo Bills girl. I was actually so going to ask you that. we are part of the mafia. Okay, yeah. Um, we did go to four Super Bowls when Jim Kelly was the quarterback. We didn't win. I but know. we had Bruce Smith. We had Thurman Thomas. Mm-hmm. We had Andre Reid. We had Steve Tasker. We had, I mean, that was that was great. Mm-hmm. And um, so, so we... you, we, you we, root for him? Yeah, we, we, we root for him. And uh, we were a big soccer family with the kids growing up. But... In general, like you're talking about right now, I'm running around so much, doing mm-hmm. so many things that uh, I enjoy sports, but I'm not a fanatic. I got you. I got you. So let me ask you this. And and the books that you've written don't count, but what is the last book that you read, Kirk Cameron? Anything come to mind that... that uh, and the Bible does not count either. Bible, yeah, and you can't be doing the Bible. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know the Bible is one of those books. Every you have to, do, you have to. I'm not going to say the Bible, but since you brought it up, it's the book that every it gets discounted every single time in any list. Do you yes. know that there would never be another number one book yeah, on the New York Times best selling book point. if you allowed the Bible to be in the yeah. race because it's always number one. That's a good printed point. more languages and more copies every year and given away and sold than any other book in history. Mm. Uh, so, so anyway, no, uh, that's cool. I, if you, I was going to give you a book. Uh, okay, what, what, what book? Um, it could be your favorite book. It doesn't have to be yeah. like, the most. Um, what what what? Oh gosh, so many of the books that I read yeah, but, are yeah. commentaries on the Bible. I, so, yeah. so, that's so fine. it's not that's the Bible. Fine. So, so, so that's, recommend yeah. one because okay, here's, here's a great book. Actually, I know a great book. This is from my my one of my dearest best friends. He's been a mentor of mine, and uh, he just died, mm. and so I miss him greatly. And this is a book that has been very important to me. It's called The American Covenant. The mm. Untold Story. Yes. And he wrote it because he says our founders understood some things we've forgotten. And until we remember those things, uh, we'll, we'll not get back the blessing they left us. Wow. And uh, it's really important and it's a great read. It's called The American Covenant, The Untold Story. I actually taught through that book for 100 consecutive days uh, next to a campfire in my backyard during the COVID shutdown in California. Mm. Uh, I called it The American Campfire Revival. And uh, you can get it uh, at Amazon. You can get it anywhere. Um, American Covenant. That's the name of the book. Okay. And put you on the spot again here. Um, what's the most scared you've ever been in your life, Kurt? Wow. The oh. most scared I've ever been. <laughs> See, the, you, you didn't get a chance to, 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 to prep prepare for this. for this. You know, I'm just hitting you with these questions that I used to ask on my podcast. I was, I, oh, pr- two times. One, I thought I was having a heart attack. I called my doctor and I couldn't speak. It turned out to be indigestion. Oh. Okay. Was that embarrassing? Then, yes. Oh, no. <laughs> then the other one was I was on a Continental Airlines flight, which is not around anymore, uh, I don't think. I was going from L.A. to Denver, and five minutes into the flight, the captain came on and told us that we were going back to Los Angeles because the landing gear Mm. was possibly no longer working. And just for the sake of brevity, I won't go into all of the details, but we assumed our emergency landing positions. The flight attendant came on. She told us to, you know, tuck your head between your knees, grab your seat, blah, 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 and... I start talking to the lady next to me, saying, "Look, are you, you got are things right between you and God? Because we're, I think we could be going down right That's now. A good chance That's to, a good to win. And I thought there was ever a chance, right? <laughs> and uh, so we had a good conversation. Uh, she whipped out her rosary beads. Wow. I was looking out the window, and as we came in for landing, the, the flight attendant was screaming, "Head down, stay down, head down, stay oh, down!" Lord. And I was like, "Oh my gosh!" And there's fire fire engines lining the runway. As we approach, and we came in, and I thought, God, this is it. Oh, God. Mm. I, I, ho- holy cow. And we came in, and we landed, and it was just fine. That's incredible. But I was, I was, I my heart was racing. Yeah, so, 
So when something like that happens and the landing gear is stuck, right? Why not just keep going to Denver? Because, you know, that's right. Like, they didn't want right. to clean up the mess. <laughs> right. They were like, get, like, get, they're like, no. The airport's like, no, nah, we're not going to deal with that. Go <laughs> no, back, no, send no, it no. back. Go back it, home. At back. least if everything works out, you're now where you're supposed to be. <laughs> yeah. Now I got to get on another flight in LA. <laughs> I do have to ask this because you told, you don't have to tell the story out there, but uh, what's your favorite animal? Mm. And I hope it's the one that we talked about outside. The mm. one you killed? No, oh, yeah. he gave the story. <laughs> oh, sorry, I just I ruined the punchline. I no, should have seen good. that no, coming. No, I should have yeah. seen that coming. But Kirk was telling us about amazing story about a yeah. buffalo, and I felt so bad because I'm like, man, I killed a buffalo three you years ago. Didn't have to ago. show him the picture of you. But with I, the felt, dead I felt buffalo, so bro. convicted because he's so passionate about the buffalo. <laughs> I'm like, I have to tell him that I killed one. I don't know why I confessed that to you. <laughs> let me let me ask. <laughs> it was it. It was your conscience. It was. It was. It was, it was really bad. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I love buffalo, but you know, actually, true, true is they're bison. The North American uh -huh. bison is yeah, actually bison. not even yeah. a buffalo. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's a bison. Um, but frogs have always been my favorite animal. Hmm. Um, something about frogs I really, I really like, and the color green. I don't know why. Mm. Maybe that says something about me psychologically. Know. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure there's. Some I don't. I don't know. I think there's you a test Jordan. out there you can take, uh -huh. and green yeah. means something. Yeah, Jordan, so, Jordan Peterson could tell me. There what you it go. Is. Yes. So here's a question. Um, I'm going to ask you, and then I'm going to ask Zach. Uh, um, I mean, you're you're a celebrity, but what is say a celebrity that you've encountered that you were like, oh my gosh, I've got to get my picture made with so and so like who who is uh, your your favorite uh, celebrity meeting of all time my favorite celebrity meeting of all time and then I'll tell you my worst celebrity meeting of yes. all time. Okay. Okay. <laughs> oh, no. Was it as embarrassing as indigestion? No. No, it was embarrassing. I, I would have, I was embarrassed for the, for the other guy. Oh, no. So my favorite celebrity meeting was uh, Henry Winkler. I grew up on Happy Days. Sure. Watch the Fonz all yeah. the time. I mean, he was just the coolest, right? Snap your fingers, two girls come running <laughs> towards you to slow dance in the diner, hop on your motorcycle and drive off, yep. right? Yeah. Henry Winkler. And he's so, so much more versatile actor than just that role that, that so for the cool. longest time people but, just thought But the Fonz was the man. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And then one day I was at a promotional thing for ABC when I was on Growing Pains, uh -huh. and there he was. But he didn't look like the Fonz. No leather jacket, didn't have his shoe polish, black, slick back hair and <laughs> jeans and boots. He was like in a tweed suit. And oh, and I went up no. to meet him and uh, he said, hi, hi, I'm Henry Winkler. Really nice to meet you. And I was like, totally not <laughs> expecting guard, that. I was expecting, <laughs> hey. Hey. <laughs> And <clears throat> he was the nicest, yeah. gentlest, kindest soft-spoken man Seems ever like and i was just like yeah somebody took over That's you know his cool. body <laughs> and and he was just he was a delight to meet and then i i uh, i was at another media thing and I, there was william shatner he was on uh, that. Was it L.A. Law? Was oh, it uh, uh, Boston? Boston Legal. Legal. Something like that. Yeah. Oh, so, maybe he was on L.A. Law. So know. anyway, um, I was. We were such. We were such Star Trek fans back mm -hmm. in the '80s that my dad named me after Captain Kirk. That's wow. awesome. Yeah. The family legend is that my sister. Uh, Bridget was was originally going to be named Spock, but my mother wouldn't let it happen. Oh, that would be nice. And uh, <laughs> I got to meet Henry Winkler. I'm sorry. I got to meet William Shatner, uh -huh. who was Captain Kirk back in the day. Uh -huh. uh, and when I went up to go say hello to him, I said, Mr. Shatner, my name is Kirk Cameron. I'm on a show called Growing Pains here on ABC. Um, you've probably never seen it. But my dad named me after your character on Star Trek. And I just wanted to shake your hand. And... <laughs> I just, all I remember was him sort of looking at me like uh, he didn't have time to talk. And he kind of, he kind of gave me a little, oh, a little no. pat and just said, kind of, I don't remember exactly what he said, but the, the, the takeaway was, okay, that's cute kid. Run yeah. Along. Scram. Get on. Oh, you know, that, that was, that, that, that was the Bob. And I thought, oh, we man, that was like, my that was so deflating yeah. because yeah. He, was, he was like a, you know, a childhood hero. And, and so you, you probably blocked out what he said because it hurt so much. So I think the I think the moral of the story is if if you have like childhood heroes from TV or music stars or something like that, just savor those memories. Maybe you don't want to meet all of your <laughs> yeah. childhood heroes. No they may not live up to your to your memories. Yeah, that, Some of them do though. Yeah. Like Henry Winkler. Uh-huh. Yep. And, and and you know who else does? Oh, there's a couple of true blue ones. There's a singer. 
My, uh, 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 Stephen Curtis Chapman. Have you ever heard yeah. of him? Uh-huh. He's the most awarded artist in all of Christian music right. mm-hmm. history. Mm-hmm. Real deal, I good guy. And, and, and there's others that Rob are really Shiner, ma- Shiner amazing guys. Rob Shiner was here a couple of months ago. He was the nicest yeah. human when you when you meet a true blue oh, real they're he, rare and precious and boy he they're took so me great to his dressing room here and we started talking i'm like i'm literally talking to rob schneider right in front of me <laughs> i will i i did not remember anything he said but it was such a nice experience <laughs> yeah. and i was telling him i'm going to israel in a couple of weeks go here go here go here and go here i'm like yes sir oh wow that's yeah cool, it was man. awesome yeah. it was awesome yeah i guess for me it would probably be uh one time when george foreman came into the studio when pat oh, and i were, yeah. were in houston and uh, George Foreman just showed up because he, he lives down there, and he was all by himself. I mean, he he was just like Henry Winkler as far as you know, soft spoken. You know, yeah. get him in a ring and and, and yeah, you know, tear they, your head off. Right, but but <laughs> but such a very genuinely nice guy, Zach. I mean, obviously in your job, uh, you uh, cross paths with a lot of celebrities. I'm sure. Um, other than you can't say Kirk Cameron. <laughs> I was gonna I was gonna say Kirk Cameron, but now that I can't, I took it, well, I took I'm it just from kidding. You. Yeah. <clears throat> um, yeah, so uh, the the celebrity that that I had the opportunity to meet that uh, was I was the most appreciative to meet him was a guy that played football at the University of Florida. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna give you guys oh, I got it. I'm gonna give you guys a hint here. Uh, halftime championship game, they're down. Uh, he, he he runs into the middle of the the locker room. He calls us, all the other players around him. He goes, "Get in here." Get in here. We've got 30 seconds for the rest of our lives. <laughs> 30, 30 minutes for the rest of our lives. Tim Tebow. Tim yeah, Tebow. Absolutely. Uh, I grew up reading his books, and uh, I love sports. I played sports growing up. I played uh, basketball and baseball, and uh, he was just a guy that I looked up to, and I got to meet him at a gala in Alabama. I went to school at Auburn and had the opportunity to go to a gala where there was uh, just a few people there, and I got to talk to him for almost 20 minutes. Oh, and cool. just to uh and he was uh, listening to me intently and, 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 you know, answering all the questions I had and awesome. it didn't look like he, you know, uh, didn't want to talk with me, a, a low-level college student, but he just was the real deal. So, uh, Tim Tebow, he's the man. That's very cool. So. Very cool. Uh, I know you guys are hungry. I'm going to ask you one more question here, Kirk, before uh, we take off here. Um, if you could go back in history, can't say Jesus, <laughs> who would you like to meet, have dinner with? <laughs> uh, see, see. Normally, wow. yeah. you get a heads up on some of these questions. Yeah. yeah. But, okay, you can have three people at the table. Dinner, dinner with three people from history. Jesus doesn't give him Gosh, Jesus on this one. I give him I, Jesus I on this. He got three of them. No, Jesus is providing the food. Oh, okay, got it. <laughs> the bread, <laughs> the bread, right? And the wine. Yeah. Um, I mean, are you a big history buff? I mean, is there, I, is there a period I, I, in time? I, and there? there's a period in t- period of time that I that that I really like and. Um, there's there's a man named William Bradford. Mm. Hmm. Uh, actually, yeah. So I, 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 th- I, I think our friend Katarina is actually Bradford is actually a descendant of oh. William Bradford. Wow. Of and course, her father's is. name uh, is uh, no, and her father's voice. name is William Bradford. Wow. It makes sense. It makes Katarina, perfect sense. 100%. Katarina, she know what she's talking about. Yes. Okay. So um, William Bradford was the governor of the Pilgrims. Mm. And he was an amazing man. And I've been to his grave mm. in Plymouth, Massachusetts, and uh, read his memoirs. And he's just somebody that I love. There's all there's the guy who discovered that communism is not going to work in America. <laughs> yeah. Right? yeah, right. So this is this is this is soon after the Reformation. He comes over here with this whole new idea. Um, it's not just him, but th- there was 102 passengers on the Mayflower, mm-hmm. um, and you know. Half of them don't make it through the winter. There's 51 of them left, and he's the governor, and he lays down the, he plants the seeds and lays the template for what later becomes the greatest, freest, most prosperous and generous nation the world has ever known. Absolutely. With more freedom, more liberty, more opportunity than we've ever had. And uh, he, he's an amazing guy. I'd love to sit down and talk with him. We can't get you him, but if you have time today, <laughs> go next door. Oh, wow. I believe we have his watch. <laughs> and I believe we have uh, his mirror, and I believe we have some of his writings. JP will hook you up over there. JP will hook you up with all JP that stuff. So that's the closest I've, thing I could get you to William Bradford. Yeah, the, you have amazing artifacts over there. Yes, we do. I've, I've seen yeah. some of those. Uh, David Barton took us through, and uh, it's a it's, it's pretty incredible. Very you got to go in there, Zach. Yeah, yeah. here's a ring 
with George, a lock of George Washington's, Washington's hair, hair in it, right? That belonged that his to his wife gave to Jefferson or something. Uh, no, what's the other not guy? Not Jefferson. Oh my no, gosh. Not Hamilton. Jefferson. Hamilton. Yes. And and do they have the? Does somebody have the coat with the bullet holes in it? We have the coat with the blood. The coat the with the blood. Yes. Like, like crazy blood. artifacts. Yes. I think I know what there. you guys are about to go do. So I better <laughs> let you go. This uh, is after bacon. Yes, after well, bacon. After, go bacon. Go after bacon. eggs and bacon, eggs not and just bacon. Is there, is there any flavor combination that delights your taste buds Absolutely more than not. coffee and bacon nope. together? Nope. You know, I've never really thought that one through, but I don't know. That might be the. It might be the, the golden that's ticket. One hundred percent. That's right. That's the closest thing you get to God on earth. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Bacon, Bacon and uh, coffee. coffee. <laughs> well, listen, <laughs> Man. Zach Bell. Thanks for bringing us Kirk Cameron yes. today. We've had a it blast was fun. with you guys and. Uh, Go find some bacon, and thanks yes. for joining us. Oh, yes. There you, Who's that's, this? Okay, that's, so this is... Okay, all right, hold on. Here's the backstory. Okay. Uh, I that's thought David it was Hogg. Hogg it, at the it, beginning. It, it is well, Hogg. Well, it is. David yes. Hogg has been superimposed on Boss Hogg. A listener of ours made us that pillow when the whole My Pillow thing, and, and, and David was starting his own pillow company, and so there... <laughs> <laughs> there you go. That's Roscoe Pico Ro- Train Roscoe and Pico Boss Hogg. Yeah, there you go. I watched Dukes of Hazard. Me too. Another great, another great show. Yes. Oh, absolutely underrated. Am I right? Yeah. No one believes me around here, but that is one of the best shows of all time. Anyway, uh, just some good old boys, boys never meaning, meaning no harm. <laughs> been running from the law. Hold on, what is it? Hold on. Oh, I'm not letting this go. Running from the law. It's running from the law since the day they were born. Just now I'm frustrated. Go, <laughs> now, my, now my brain is to go you, listen to you, Wayland. You, you're going to go look that All up. All right. Y'all have a good one. Thanks so you much, too. guys.